Hi there, I'm Chris May, host of This Day in Weather History, a podcast from the Weather Network. It was the year 2017. Hands up if you're in the greater Toronto area, you remember the super high water levels. I know I did because it shut one of, what's well, actually shut all my favorite parks for the whole summer. The water levels in Lake Ontario were at the highest they had been in over 100 years when they peaked at just under 76 meters on May 27th. Now it got started as early as April. We were in the spring. It was an exceptionally warm start to the spring season, so there was a rapid snowmelt, plus heavy rain started to pour down, but that was only part of the problem. I'll get into that in a second. The flooding started, and it immediately affected the entire Toronto shoreline, but then started to move to all the other shorelines throughout the greater Toronto area and elsewhere. Nobody felt it as badly, however, as the 800 residents of Toronto Island and it had to be shut down for an entire season. Those 800 people, 30 businesses, two schools just had to learn to live with the exceptionally high water levels. Many waterfront parks in Toronto, as well as the surrounding GTA, suffered some pretty extensive uh, erosion in places. Plus, there was a lot of damage and there was a pile up of, of debris and residue that came in as well. Now, I said earlier that part of it was the weather. The other part had to do with the International Joint Commission. You see, they regulate the outflow from Lake Ontario through to the St. Lawrence River following a a prescribed plan called Plan 2014. That balances the water levels from Lake Ontario and the way that it flows out through the St. Lawrence in an effort to minimize flooding and erosion to as many people as possible. That is what got started. That's how it eventually ended peacefully, thankfully, after it started this day in weather history.